We have Shartel Queen with Root Seeds, two Vents, two Razor Sharp Edges, and a March of Shields. That's a really strong start. That is ridiculous strong start. Um, we have Plated Seal Daedalus, Shield Fell, <coughs> Cleanse Seraph. Should be fine. Oh, it says that don't get too cocky. Overconfident, something, something, something. Uh, unit centering with rage is not awful, but not, you know, cleanse seraph. Especially on top floor, doesn't you know doesn't do anything. But that's an extra six attack on on an imp if it attacks. Uh, Hell's banner though, fairly appealing. Imperialist royalty. Definitely go. I think I definitely want to go imperialist here. With um, it gives us some AOE, and we've got like razor sharp and root seeds for a bit of extra damage. You know, hitting the front guy, so we probably AOE and kill, uh, like at least a front shield guy. Maybe a f maybe even you know probably don't get to the heavy. Maybe 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 do. Uh, and got a bit of health to do that with here. How we go with 10 armor? <clears throat> What's the spit? Spits 20 damage, so 10 armor's fine. Early unit's nice. Sometimes very nice. No imps there. Um, let's set up for the collector there. Hit that one. Look at that energy. I wonder if I wanted to put two of those there. Well, it means I can raise a sharp one, I guess. So one of the issues is getting too low. <clears throat> That's something we don't want to do, especially now since Razor Sharp hits your current hit points, not reduces your max, which is not fun. We do have some armor coming though. I'm going to do it this way and that way. To try and preserve some health. Need to get that much higher. We should be able to imp. <clears throat> Are we imping next turn? We might be imping next turn. So there is potential to pull this guy forward just to get first hit on him. Otherwise, it's basically 10 damage a, a turn. We don't have the attack for that. And if we don't get the imp, if we play two cards, we'll have bonus three armor, a uh, three energy, so we'll have four, <clears throat> which means that will do eight. It's not enough. So we kind of have to do this, and it feels a little silly. But that's halving the damage output from the boss is super important. If we draw an M, which, you know, well, we didn't. He's getting three hits in, so the Razor Sharp works here. It's 
so close. I put um, root seeds on <coughs> Queen. I think it was would have been better putting it on that Stuart because um, he was getting a third hit in, whereas she was only getting two in. Uh, I, I love a hidden passage. Moving the. Um, I wonder if Glimmer's better than. Uh, we'll see for the heal than <coughs> Vent. Oh, and it's not an X. Yeah. Kind of strange. We've got a good AOE card on our on our queen, whereas playing something like a Glimmer is still good for her health. There's probably better health cards. Like focus growth is too expensive. I think prevention of some damage. I wasn't thinking of like the nine twos. Uh, if we get a proper unit, then she won't have to. <clears throat> she won't have to be there for bosses. And a plus ten on event, I can play on zero. Magic with a work about it. Depends if we go Hellhorn. Why would I go Hellhorn? I can't think of reasons. <laughs> so, probably going spells. So we could probably minus two the. Or at least minus one the focus growth, I guess. <clears throat> uh, sweeper. Not really doing what we want to do. Pass on these guys. Okay then. <laughs> kind of have to take one. It's a feels moment. this now like the being able to play more cards a turn is and then when we get that maybe we play that I still think we yeah let's reduce the root seeds let's see how no, that's fine. Yeah, well, fine. I guess. Yeah, fine's not. <laughs> fine's not the response I want to get after first door. Like, okay, maybe is. <laughs> mm. You're okay with spikes. Put imps behind queen so they don't attack, and then it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. it was
<laughs> wow, 9,000. You arrived. <clears throat> How are you, my friend? <laughs> Have a great day at work, dude. How do I kill this dude? And vent off the enemies. <coughs> Let me imp something. Will we not have an imp? <coughs> we will not have an imp for her, which is, I guess, okay. Care to heal her? <clears throat> Not really. The damage isn't there for what we want. Yeah, that works okay. And we can lift her. We probably should. Then <clears throat> damage goes there. No. Party floor. Rage, but it's Clan Seraph versus Armor, which is good. I know the rules. <clears throat> Take the imps, they're cute. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Oh, I was looking for a way to sort of <coughs> fight against the um, razor sharp. You can sit up top with other plant then I guess. Spend an extra 25 just for the sake of spending it. <laughs> makes it makes some of the trials a bit better, I guess. And I don't want to die. I don't want one of those. Alright, Daedalus. I think we're we're in an okay spot for Daedalus.
just can't bring myself to put plus two on a on the steelworker. He doesn't deserve it. Oh, I was thinking, what if I don't draw an imp next turn? I'm like, no, there's five in the deck. We'll draw one next turn. this front guy. Except for that, but what do you do? Um, hmm. <clears throat> oh, this we go. Everyone as healthy as possible, especially top floor. Start building that armor up. Yes. on 31. Davis is for 9. We'd have to get him to 37. Which means we need to draw it again, which we can't. Oh, he's going to get 10 armor, though. Maybe gets 10 armor. No, he gets 10 armor. Um... Alright, because we're definitely drawing March of Shields. <clears throat> Ah, oh, 31 armor is... Plus, okay, so hang on. Brain spans, 31, 46, plus 10 armor is 56. Which is already over the... I can get it to 59. Which doesn't give him an extra turn. Let's do that. You get to go there. Pretty sure we're good. Yeah, nice. Right, 
Oh, look, we even save him. Steel with him. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. Good everywhere else. It's fun. Energy. Don't think we need energy. <clears throat> draw and capacity both good. Then we make up the draw with root seeds. This could be a capacity. We could you could you can take draw. Um I think with the root seeds. Like they are giving you some draw, but if you want to get even more, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, <clears throat> if that'll have a can of stings. But usually you're just sort of rotating through the can of stings as well. Do you want to get the things like the... <clears throat> We can get a holdover on a, a razor sharp would be okay, but then we want to be getting to the what you call it, the other thing quick as well. Steel enhancer, not as much, I guess. The imps sort of help a little bit. If we've only got queen on the that floor though, do we need them? Yes, no. Hey, boys, are you arrived? Yeah, let's take the draw. Okay. We really need a large steel enhancer. The steel worker, we just need to sort of do that. I want to 510 him. Attack on Husk Hermit would be good. Can't reroll. I mean, we can, but we get to buy one thing. Money's not been the greatest. Uh, it's not a thorn. We don't have uh, <clears throat> don't have enough healing for any of the, for either of those guys. So now we can reroll for two minor buffs. Uh, stew. Well, we can play stews to get them out. We also want to play imps, so I think stews are the weakest at the moment. Uh, okay, so... <clears throat> 20 AoE, now we're looking at like going rally just to boost her damage as well, because we're going to need extra damage. We would need to pick up Endless on Welder well Helper though. Well, you go transcend him first, but you, you want to get well to help her as well. <clears throat> Afternoon, tiny. I am well. The weather is bland. It's just uh, don't often see with a rail beater. No, it's not a very good unit. Um, but sometimes you just need something to sort of chunk some damage. Um, and we're in a position where we just needed something to protect Husk Hermit. <clears throat> Do I ever pick those units with Exile? Um, I mean, you've got to pick units. I don't do very well with Exile, so maybe not doing something that I don't normally do is <clears throat> probably better than doing what I normally do, which is lose. I tend to find that with Exiled, all I try to do is imp runs. <clears throat> Sometimes they're hilarious, and other times they just die at Arcus. The balance mods have Railbeater as double armor effects on this unit. I think it was a thousand percent a good change. Well, it's definitely a positive change in terms of making him stronger, 
Whether that's a good change for the game, don't know. Whether that actually fits as part of what we call balance in a balance mod, definitely not. However, um, it makes a good, um, <clears throat> it's an interesting change and uh, that's, a, that's a redesign, not a balance. Uh, and I haven't fired, you know. Back when games didn't, uh, eh. no, I'm not going to go down that talk conversation again. We have we've had this conversation a lot, but that's a redesign. Is it good for the game? Who knows? Not playing with it. Um, is it an improvement? Yes. As far as that individual character, yes, it's an improvement. But just because you just because you buff a card doesn't make the game better. Sometimes it does. I'm just saying always. You know, not always. <clears throat> I mean, why don't we just, you know, add a zero to every unit's attack and hit points? We'll call it Panzer's Balance Mod. Every friendly unit gets and 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 um, damaging spell gets a zero added to the end of end of them, and that would be an improvement um, on the units. But the game would be trash. But you know, if you want, if you're writing mods, and you want to sort of get some popular mods, do something that makes units um, or spells massively overpowered, because people will play with them because they want to win, and they want to win at all expense. It doesn't matter if they realise that, you know, it's the equivalent of putting up a professional boxer against a, um, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a small child, you know, and putting him in a boxing ring. People don't care about that when they're playing strategy games, if they lose at them. They want all the mods that just make them powerful, but they don't want to be told that the mod is too powerful to win. So don't call it a, this is, you know, whatever your name is, um, super powerful, you'll win all the time mod. Call it a balance mod, and then people will be like, oh, I'm winning when the game's balanced. I'm good at strategy games, <laughs> you know. Uh, and you'll get lots of downloads on your mod, and people will like it and upvote it. Still not re-rolling on that. It's a balance mod. The balance is just off kilter. Dude, that's pretty much every fan base balance, balance mod ever. You know, or at least 99% of them. I balanced the game. You made all these things way too powerful in a game that was already, you know, win 80% of the time. No, 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 no. These are good now. Now I win 90% of the time. You could just play better. What? Why did I do that? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't want this. You like the quality of life mods that don't change the gameplay? Yeah, there's some get there's some mods get put out for games with good quality of life, and they can be really good. Um, the Arcadian Clan is way too powerful. Yeah, but like I said, which uh, and um, definitely uh, chronometrically um, could be played way too complicated. And there was, uh, I feel there was enough stuff in that in that clan to be at least two clans, maybe with more stuff, three clans. Like he got some, he's got some really awesome ideas that he put in there, um, and like just didn't fill them all out completely. Instead, just put another idea in there. It'd be like. Think, imagine if you took wax units, right? Take take the waxes and umbra. So you've got morsels and reform, right? Two really good mechanics. But let's not flesh out either deck. So pull out half of each of the deck and then put them together as one clan. Right? I think that's how it, that's how it felt playing um, Arcadian to me. 
I thought if it, it would have been really good if it had just been fleshed out a bit, but like split them back into into two two groups, flesh them out a, a, a bit more. Um, you know, and you'd have two. You know, well, there, there is there's the base there for two really good potential clans. One ember for 20 targeted damage, no downside. Like, yeah, so stuff like that. And there's an upside if you don't play it. And so the argument that someone made was, well, that's the gamble. It's if you don't play it to get it stronger, you've missed out on the damage. I'm like, but when you do play it, it starts at 20. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, you don't even need to not play it. Just, just play it for 20. Just pick all of them, and that way, when you draw um, six or seven of them, and you play three for um, on on three energy, and you do sixty damage, all the other ones get bigger. <laughs> yeah. I like the um, I like the the one with the uh, the stones on the floor that put a buff on the floor. Like that was really cool. Visually bad, but I think he's trying to work on that with the, the template that was given. I'm thinking if I don't want to ascend Stuart uh, up here, because I might want to play an imp here. And he's only a five damage at the back, so it'll be it'll add up, but I just don't think it's worth it. Yeah, screw you, Stuart. <laughs> Giving Shardtail Queen a quick time is really cool, yeah, because she throws. Which, because it's an action, and I think one of the things to remember is that hey, Aki, you've arrived. Um, actions happen on their on their turn, not at the. Um, not the end of turn. I will, I think, I hope that they change because they have been doing some things with the colors, but they're using the same one. So like they changed enchant to not be yellow, so it would stand out, and you'd understand that this haste is coming from the this unit. Kill this unit, they won't have haste anymore. I like that. I think that was a really good change from when it was yellow. Um, I hope they. I, I think using the same purple on friendly units on enemy units kind of good because you know that anything purple can get um silenced right unless enemy is going to get silence i think the action should be i know it's got a um an hourglass which now that i think about it makes no sense it's an action you do something now you're not waiting for it for later um but like, because the resolve happens at the end of turn, uh, end of combat turn. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's an easy one to overlook. Although she's the only one. Oh no, um, what's his face has one. Soul Guard has action. There's also revenge as well. Yeah, I don't know. Does resolve have an hourglass as well? I don't even know it. The yeah, well there we go. There's resolve. And I guess the, you know, the hourglass kind of makes sense there. You've got to wait until the end of combat. Uh, that's a resolve icon. That's a resolve icon. Although, you know, let's be fair. Uh, you know, almost every piece of art is duped from another piece of art, right, in the game. There's been a lot of reuse of, um, of stuff. That is misleading. Now that we, yeah, now it's an hourglass as well. All right, let's hit you with that. Hit you with that. 
<clears throat> mm, I think that was wrong. I think I needed to vent. Oh, then I can't. Huh. Because I want to vent first, but then I can't transcend him. Well, I guess that sort of answers that, doesn't it? Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Razor Sharps took forever to show up. Is your deck's too thick pants? Yeah, probably. No, 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 it's an empty ball. Oh, no, imp oh we can bet. Uh, he's going to put things in our deck. Okay, we're going to lift the, one of these now, I think. If we lift it, we put the root seeds on it. Uh, I think we're fine. I'm not going to try to work out all of those. And I'm not going to. Oh, I could have not AoE'd. Maybe we wouldn't have got a blight card. Although I don't think it matters. Not gonna give me a blight card. Out of principle. It's a red X, don't play anything. Impressive? I don't think so. We could have an Inferno in between floors. Which I think would be perfectly fine. We're only dumping Stuarts in there, and we're probably going to get rid of them anyway. Um, we have no... Or it could just be bottom floor Inferno. Um, since we have no need <laughs> outside of... Unless we have fights. Even if... Yeah, we don't have any need to be on the bottom floor. We don't really have all that. We're doing at Merchant of Magic anyway, except more minus ones, which we could just put them on the Inferno. Yeah. Uh, take a little, little dude. He either fits or he doesn't. They almost usually get you one draw to replace themselves a turn late if you can't keep them alive. Very rarely do you put them down and they just die. Uh, I wonder if I need to go for multi on her. I mean, it's double damage. I probably should, right? That's probably what you want to do. Quick? Quick's also good. Oh, 
So it's either quick or save. Um, we do have a merchant of steel there. We can go to caverns. What are we chasing if I skip creep? Multi. So if we if if she kills the line, um, quick saves uh, armor on uh, her tank, which is you know the equivalent of having health, right? Well, it is. If she doesn't kill the line, then not only does he take the damage anyway, um, but then we leak. So that's something to think about. So then the other thing we could do is... ...dupe that. And double it, and that's a lot of armor. And health between them. Uh, however, that then becomes a lot of ember drain later as well. Although, you know, we're, we are, and we don't get it back with Hell's Banner if you can't play units. And that's where, if her damage was high enough to finish off um, the Pyre Wing. Queen's going to hit for 40 straight up, so she can, you know, we're going to be Ember Drain on that turn, but we can get two imps played in between. Maybe. Yeah, that's saying, like, it has to be damaged enough, which means her damage has to be at um, 100. Yeah, I mean, I should probably make him small anyway, because it, it's a, it's like like a capacity, right? Even if we don't dupe him, it's adding a capacity to that floor. Yeah, I mean, we could larger now, except it's there's no large there. The other option is plus ten to give a plus ten straight away, but. So the issue is with it, it's unlikely we get her. Unless we get the Inferno early and hit the first Shade Wing, it's unlikely we're going to be able to quick her to the point where she's killing off um, that Shade Wing. Although if she kills a later one, it's probably worth it. We are also a couple of fights away from where we need to be. Do we need to take this? Well, I mean, we're quick now. We might not even need... Because she's quick, we can... We can put her down lower even to get through Hidden Assault, guys. And put Queen on top floor. I don't know if I like that. It's probably better off letting Queen die, getting some of the early stuff. Quick does nothing. You just don't put her on the bottom floor. You put her on middle. They don't. You know, they don't keep their stealth.
have queen on bottom to throw. Well, no, if you're gonna if, if you're gonna have queen and below the other ones, you just put queen on middle and put um, sweeper on top. And there's there's no reason having anyone on the bottom floor this this fight. It's just working out which one's below the other one and which one's on the very top. The other issue though is that, I think that's probably the best way to do it, the other issue though is um, with one imp she does 50 damage to the front unit. Um, or with two imps she does uh, 60 from the throw and then 20 which is going to kill off one of the frontline dudes. But since the other one's a sweeper as well it doesn't matter. Who don't have a single target or a multi? Okay. It's not terrible. I mean, it could, I could inferno top. Twelve health. 
Although then we're probably leaking that one a lot more. Should have put two at the jump block before I sending the M. Yes. Put him at. Ah, oh, he still soaks an extra one anyway. Doesn't matter. Gives me an extra hit. That'll give me an extra hit. That'll give me everything. Gives to give me a oh, right, thanks. Transcendents are weird when they don't really do a lot. They're still good, kind of. Except when you draw them early. Whereas if you've got a, a Transcendent that is going to be doing a lot, like you've got an Endless one and you draw it early, you just play it early, knowing that it's there and then it starts getting amazing. When you have Transcendents that are just going to do the sum of all single pass of Imps have done once, Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't like going off think. I prefer to calculate. not someone who sort of feels how things are going it's more of a, a look at numbers if you imp so you're probably better endlessing an armor imp over transcendent 
but an endless transcendent does the exact same thing that a endless welder helper does except um every you know except a little bit extra the advantage over the endless welder helper if you can hold onto the transcendent is you'll get one single hit of double everything So they're different. One eh, depends what you're trying to get out of it. It's still pretty bad. Even if you only have one endless world helper and you play it eight times and then drop one transcendent, it's a decent chunk. I mean, it's a, an extra, you know, well that'd be 160 armor. But like, it's not one of those amazing things. In which case, then if you're just gonna have one, then I'd prefer to have a second transcendent and do it again. What, what's the potential for endlessing though? You do have a merchant of steel there, and another one further down. But yeah, endless on both is where where it's at, right? No, Harry McDur, it doesn't. Um, so it repeats summon effects, but it doesn't actually have a summon effect. So if you play, um, if if you've just played one welder helper, and that's that summon is twenty armor. It plays the list of summon effects. So you play it, it plays the twenty armor. You play it again, it plays the twenty armor. Because otherwise you just need one, uh, one other imp, and every time you play this, it just go, it just it just doubles, um, which is the most simple exponential, right? Um, <clears throat> so I've seen people suggest, and I've seen people do it as well, when they get a an endless, they put on the transcend imp and then they dupe it. But the problem is now you've got two imps that are both doing, you know, the and they've got one welder helper. <clears throat> so you play the welder helper, and now you've got two endless transcend imps that are giving you 20 armor each. Plus some other things. Um, whereas, so in that case, you're better off duping the welder helper. <clears throat> having um, two welder helpers and an endless transcend imp, because then at least you're getting 40 armor for the for the cost of only having to play one imp over and over again. Uh, unless you've got, you know, something that's making imps cost less uh, and you're getting some other bonus out of it, but usually it's not the case if you're just looking for armor. And I don't think that makes reinf reinforce is a weird card. You know, in terms of strategy. Like you're either doubling not enough armor to make a difference or you're doubling so much armor that it doesn't make a difference. It's got this nice sweet spot where it actually does something that you almost never play it for. I just take the transcendent to be an extra imp. I think that's probably the final argument to go with it instead of skip. Because I'm not doing enough with the energy thing thanks to Hell's Banner. Um, so it's not there to be as powerful as a transcendent, it's just there to be another imp. Do I want any of this? Not really. We're not raging. So adaptive mutation. Not a deal. Energy's fine. I don't think I want to descend. Yeah. 
Yep, that's exactly right, Bullseye. I mean, there's situations where, like, I think when you get a Volatile Gauge, it becomes a pretty strong card, and then you unconsume it. I can actually do a lot of stuff. I also want to make Inferno cheaper. But I definitely need more damage output. I don't need double quick. And I would like to hit this before we go units. <clears throat> so the other thing is, do I pump Wildwood Custodian so that he doesn't get hit by a Pyre Wing? The downside is he then has Ember Drain. Or we let him get hit off by the Pyre Wing and we don't get Ember Drained. I think that's probably a better option. So, Endlessing the Welder Helper means when we do play the Transcend Imps, we get a bigger hit of um, armor off them, which is good, but it means we have to hold them until later in the fight, or if we're desperate, we need to play them. Um, which is what I'd want to do anyway. Although we'd never be desperate, we'd always have an Imp, because we'd have that one. It does give us <clears throat> 50 front-loaded damage as well when we play it, which isn't terrible. Let me go to the caverns first. So I already get to remove two stewards. Focus growth has kind of been doing a thing. Inferno's also been kind of doing a thing. Huh, I don't really actually have... Much of shields is okay. If I get rid of the one costed root seeds. And then I can put it into well, the small vent. Let's put it in the one costed root seed. I think the extra 50 front loaded damage, even if it was, um, so the only thing time would be double summons, but it was still pumping up the, no, I still like that. We're, st we're still pumping up the, potentially now Transcendent can do something worthwhile, but it is a, it's like a dead wait until that happens.
Bad time for Transcend Imp? No, it's probably the best time for Transcend Imp. <clears throat> Alright. We didn't have any more room on the floor. We killed the whole wave. Um, it's not going to show up again. Well, in theory, it shouldn't have shown up again. Plus, we shuffled. So it was the only time for Transcend Imp. Um, if it had shown up earlier, that would have been even, that would have been bad, because we wouldn't have been able to play it. We needed to play imps, right? Do we play them? As late as possible. I didn't see that he was going to be taking damage. Cheeky little little hit the other guy got in.
Hmm, probably even just ascending of queen might be better. Mm, it's more damage versus. Oh, huh, 20. This is an extra turn of 100. Yeah, I think lifting her is probably more, right? Mm, and she had more armor. She's going to be at the front anyway. Probably should have made it the front of this row. That's the play for Sarah. Well, if we draw those cards on the last turn like that. Hopefully it won't matter. Kizron. That's uh, true, she kills the armor imp. Does that matter? Well, the armor imp wouldn't have been there because it would have raised her instead of the armor imp. But she would have killed the transcend imp. Uh, so, what I'd need to do is put the transcend imp behind the steel enhancer, lift her, pull her forward, and then she's just killing a 1 1. Hey Dolce, how you doing? <clears throat> Quick on her potentially stops the pyre wings, right? In any case, it lets us deal damage to the pyre wings. So we can at least get value out of our imps. The impalate's pretty close to just hitting a pyre wing, but that's for the whole fight. That's only on the turn we draw it. Um, I think I take capacity now. We have little to remove, and the dupe on um, Welder Helpers. Eh. We only really have. I mean, a holdover on a Razor Sharp solves a lot of problems. I'm good, thank you, Dalton. Plus 10 on another vent. Really? I think it was good enough early to spend, but. I want to just consume the vent. I think I do want to consume the vent. I think once we play that vent once, we don't need it the second time. And I think actually. I probably could have known that on the other one, and earlier in the game, instead of putting the. Um, the second plus 10. I think I could have just, uh, this one, I think I should have just put a plus 20 consume. Because we're in a position where drawing it late in the fight didn't really do anything. Whereas drawing it early in the fight and just playing it and getting rid of it just makes the rest of the deck better. That's not always the case. But definitely something to think about. Huh. This is really interesting now. Like if we put down three imps, that's still 90 AOE versus 120. 
And as soon as we've done, done three, we've caught up to front loaded damage. Yeah, it's a tough call on the rally one here. <clears throat> because between her and the plant, if they're both throwing, if they're both really just AOE, um, what is, you know, if you've got two two heavies with the same, like the two heavies, the 10 190s, right? Because our plant is AOE on the top floor, if she doesn't have enough damage to kill the second heavy, it doesn't matter how much extra damage you did to the front one. I mean, yeah, you, you, you don't kill, that one wouldn't die either. But would we have killed them both if we'd had more AOE? Or do we need more Seraph damage? Which is, you know, that's a possible thing as well. But at best, it's only an extra 30 damage AoE. Which means we're only like <clears throat> one turn away. And you'd be killing the front one anyway, so you're not taking that damage. And then you're only like two turns away. But we are going in on 40 health. I guess it comes down to, is her, if she gets up to be like 200, is it irrelevant damage? And does it cause us to leak more because we're doing that? Steel wings just die no matter what, pretty much. <clears throat> Again, I don't go off thinks or feelings. I'm mean, going off numbers and calculate. Would a better question be, could you reliably get her up top for Relentless? Um, we can. Because even if she goes up the turn before Relentless, it does, like, if she's on second floor, the deck is small enough that we're going to draw through it every, every two turns. So even if we put her up while Seraph's on the bottom floor, that's fine. Like, if we do everything one turn early, um, it's more beneficial than getting the imps out. Um, and you miss out on one lot of things because we're gonna we have to play the transcendence when they come through um, towards the end of the fight, and I think at that stage the armors it doesn't matter. So if we if we take rally, you probably don't even need to put her up top. I think if you play the transcendence out on her um, with rally, that that will beat Seraph. Um, I think if you don't do that, like if you don't take Rally and you play the Transcend Imps out on um, Railbeater or Steelwork or whatever he is, uh, <clears throat> that beats Seraph. It's, it, we're really looking at which one doesn't leak. We've got high health, so it's an advantage that we can leak a little. But, you know, and because we're doing all the majority of our damage is sweep damage, the Gilded Wings that leak aren't going to be doing, like, the second heavy that leaks is going to be low health. You'd go rally if I get her 200 damage. That does it. So the, the issue is that her 200 damage only hits the front target. Um, and we've got a sweeper anyway, so it comes down to how much are we leaking. Like, both both ways beat Seraph. It's, it's all about the waves.
all about the waves. Most of the back row is small. That's irrelevant. Um, the um, the plant is quick and will kill them, so we won't leak those. And has sweep. It's it's about the it's about the second heavies and how much damage they get through. I need the sweep to have a hundred attack to prevent a leak. No. Dep that depends on how many imps we put down lower. Yeah, so if I take Rally and I can only get... assuming it, So if we assume we take Rally and we only get three imps on a line, then yes, she'll need to have 100 attack to prevent a leak. Right? Or she'll need to have 60 attack so that we only take 10 damage. Alright, whereas... And that's assuming three imps, which is a lot. You know, getting three out each turn. Um, early. There is going to be one freebie turn there. But that could be late. Let's look at the vents early. It could be, could be late. And the damage on the front one's neg uh, doesn't matter, right? Because the front one dies. The next thing is the advantage of having Rally is <laughs> she's going to get up to a stage where um, she kills the Ember Drainer by herself. If we've got Quick in, that's really good. He's only got 150, so she pretty much she doesn't do it. Or she does it off three imps now, because one of them will be a would be a um, a, a 10 damage imp anyway. It's the third one. Which one gives me joy? The one that wins, Dozy. Which is why we're calculating the the worst case scenarios. I think we're leaking that one on wave 3 anyway. So it comes down to wave 4. Uh, the, the other thing is the health. <clears throat> yeah. Currently I only have one armor imp. Now we do have, we can, we could possibly make a safe assumption that we don't get hit by a light wing um, on its own. If we draw the armor imp though, we're pretty much set. Maybe. If we get the quick tome and armor imp, we're set. We have to chump with imps for feeling bad. Yeah, that that forty hit points is an issue. Like at, at the end of it, I think that's likely the only thing that actually matters. 
like all the other things are this could happen or we could do this or none of it matters on win or lose. Putting him in middle and ascending him, he gets to resolve. I mean, you can, Dozy. And you did. Although you did say it before getting a response from your question of if you could. Rhetorical. Mm, not if the answer was no. Yeah, imagine if you got banned over that. I don't think that sounds worth it.
that mini rail blade to do our tie. We don't have much. I don't think I have anything to consume. Um, pie health is okay. Gold is okay. Endless on a transcendent would uh, just make everything irrelevant. It's probably the only thing we could do some stuff with spells. Does all right. The dupe on the welder helper is could have been a thing as well. So rally definitely would have worked. someone suggests taking rally no i said rally could have worked you don't gamble on it just because you you, you prematurely think oh we'll draw well to help her on turn one at this stage we're looking for things that could lose us the run and we want to avoid those When you take a, a chance that something could lose you the run for the for the gain is if you are lacking what that gain is going to give you and you need it to win. So if you can't win unless you take this path, or it's unlikely you win unless you take this path, and there's a small chance it could lose your run, then it might outweigh that, right? Whereas if you are got a good chance of winning without taking it, um, but there's a chance, like there's a high chance you could lose because you take it which at 40 hit points <clears throat> um, if we hadn't drawn well to help her on turn one 40 damage is starting to look bad now these wouldn't have been here we would have taken 15 to plant and let this go up to the pyre because we had pyre health right so we'd only be taking 11 this turn which means that if we didn't draw the well to help her or the imp in the box because uh, we didn't have it at the time um, we'd be on 29 health. Yeah, we wouldn't have this card without something else. And, you know, 
then it starts getting shaky. We could chomp with a Wobble Custodian, I guess. down to whether we want to play more imps. I'm going to have four spots here. I'm not playing four imps in a turn. If we lose that next turn to the Ember Drainer, I'm okay with it. that again. Send it now.
can't. I wonder at what number using a razor sharp with that at the top is worth more damage. It's probably pretty low. working out if I want to transcend him now for energy. Probably as good as any. I don't think I need to pull it forward either. And I don't think we need to calculate it. Pretty sure that's what's. Good job, Steelworker. You got 500 armor. <clears throat> so two Seraphs. No leaks. Seems good. Four wins. Oh, officially streaking. <laughs> so record nine. 